right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. WrestleMania 15. Uh, review from March 28, 1999 in Philadelphia. Um, not a good show. Very average. But it's it's crazy because financially 1999 was a good year for the WWF at the time. Uh, red Hot until the Attitude Era was really not a lot of good... Uh, good shows in 99 russo was doing a lot of writing there but uh they had a very very good financial year and a very very good uh thing of course 2000 to me was always a better year overall but i all i also thought that um wrestlemania 2000 was pretty bad as well uh you had two matches on sunday night heat you had um uh, Jacqueline defeat Ivory, which was shit. And you had a battle royal with Test and D'Lo Brown. Uh, why they would end up challenging for the tag titles, I'll never know. But you can see some of the major players that you had on the actual poster itself. Um, I think that it's, uh, like I said, you know, you... This this was one of those WrestleManias that was just average. It was just there. Um... Not a very, very good show. Anyway, the show opens up with um, Boys to Men doing America the Beautiful, which was actually really good. You had a triple threat match for the hardcore title. Hardcore Holly, Al Snow, and the hardcore champ, Billy Gunn. This did not make any sense, because going into the show, Road Dog was hardcore champ, Billy Gunn was intercontinental champ. Well, about two weeks before, they swapped it over and kind of did a bit of a, a an old switcheroo. Why they did it, I'll never know. I just do know that um, this match, to me, was all right. You know, it, it was the typical hardcore match at Mania. This was before they had the 24-7 stuff uh, for the hardcore title. Uh, and the WWF was almost there. They were beating Nitro on a consistent basis week after week after week now by this point. But they were still not there as far as putting on good manias the attendance was later announced as over 20,000 it was like 20,200 something uh next match you have um Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart against D'Lo Brown and Test this match went under four minutes and it's sad to see that uh this would actually be Owen Hart's last Wrestlemania he would actually tragically pass away uh two months later in a tragic accident that happened at the over the edge pay-per-view uh, this So this would be Owen Hart's last WrestleMania. And fun fact about this Mania as well, this was the first pay-per-view or first event of any kind to be released on DVD. So that's pretty cool to uh, to note <coughs> as far as um, this stuff going. Next up, you had Butterbean and Bart Gun. Not going to rate this. You had the damn Brawl for All uh, where you had shoot fights and worked uh, stuff, whatever. Um, Bart Gunn gets knocked out in 35 seconds by Butterbean. Um, killed Bart Gunn's push, killed his career. <coughs> and, yes, I mean, I, I don't really know what in the world is going on there with that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was what it was. Uh, seems like I'm getting through this review kind of fast. It's because there's not really much on this show to get behind. Mankind defeated the big show Paul White in a uh by DQ uh in just under seven minutes. Uh <coughs> basically what happened here is um the winner of this match was gonna was gonna be the referee in the main event between Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. They were gonna main event uh, be a part of the main event of WrestleMania, which is cool in an aspect, you know, them being the special guest referee, that's always great, but, um, you know, uh, Mankind won by DQ, when Big Show, uh, hit Mankind with a choke slam, but he choke slammed him on two chairs, so, yeah, that happened, and Mankind won, but, uh, even though Mankind won, he would be injured and wouldn't do it, and, um, Big Show, would also then attack Vince, so he would be taken to jail, kayfabe, uh, whatever, taken to jail, so McMahon said he was going to be the guy that was going to, um, referee or had something up his sleeve, you had, and let this sink in here, 
You had 12 matches at this WrestleMania in a three-hour span. You also would have 12 matches, counting the heat match, at uh, WrestleMania 17. And that was four hours, and that's considered one of the greatest match, uh, greatest WrestleManias of all time. Shows you the difference that that extra hour makes and the difference of what the major players and stuff are. Uh, four corners match for the Intercontinental title. Road Dog, Val Venus, Ken Shamrock, and Goldust. Goldust will win the title the next night anyway, so why you don't just give it to Val? I mean, excuse me, uh, Goldust here. I'll never know. Four corners match. Uh, basically, I think Val Venus had a thing for Ryan Shamrock, which was Ken Shamrock's sister at the time, and they had a whole other, they had a whole other thing going on with, uh, God knows what. I mean, who, who in the hell knows what the hell was going on with all of this shit? I mean, golly, dude. I mean, so it's one of those other, other, other things that was just god awful and terrible, man. I mean. And I'm going to be a little generous with the score when you see what I give the score. Um, it's probably a little bit high. Um, Kane defeated Triple H by DQ. Uh, just under 12 minutes. Uh, so basically, um, China reunited with Triple H. She was with uh, Kane here. And she would low blow them. And they would end up uh, turning baby faces for about an hour. So they return on X Pac later on in the later on in the night, which we'll get to. But uh, that was pretty cool to see there. That was pretty cool to see. Uh, you'd have eleven and a half minutes of uh, those guys competing against one another. You'd have Kevin Kelly against uh, Mr. Mc uh, Kevin Kelly interviewing Mr. McMahon. Excuse me. Um, you'd have him interviewing Mr. McMahon. Then you would get to uh, Sable and Tori. This match went five minutes too long. Um, Sable and Tori had no business being in a women's championship match at the biggest show of the year. WrestleMania. Sable. God, man. We're, we're just going to see. She was as green as goose shit. If I should say so myself. Just not a very good in-ring worker. Um, you know, she was mainly... Uh, she was mainly looked upon because of the things that were on her chest. We're going to be honest with you there. Uh, but next up, you would actually get to a match that was pretty decent. Uh, I thought was just under match of the night. You had Shane McMahon defeating European champion X-Pac. Uh, to win the European title with Triple H attacking X Pac, hitting the pedigree, and Shane getting the win. Surprisingly decent match considering the two guys that were involved, and one of them not being a full time wrestler, <coughs> the other one being part really, really solid actually. You know, uh, one of those matches that you, you know, is very, oh, excuse me, very underrated of sorts. Um, it's a very, very underrated match. I'd recommend going back and watching that. Then you get to one of the worst Hell in a Cell matches, if not the worst of all time. When they go back and they look over Hell in a Cells, they skip this one all the time. They always like to make the Undertaker streak look good, but really the first six or seven matches of a streak were, was really just Diesel Kane. I mean, uh, right here, this was the worst Hell in a Cell match ever that I think... I, I mean, there's going to be no Hell in a Cell match that's going to top this. Although, you can make an argument for Hell in a Cell 2019 with The Fiend and Seth Rollins. But hey, that's another that's another story for another time. Um, this match was absolute <coughs> poor shit. First of all, you had a heel versus heel match, which doesn't usually work that often. But then you also want to incorporate... Oh, man, the corporation and the ministry. I've had it with this damn show. Um, but luckily, I've only got one more match left to review, and that is the no disqualification match for the World Wrestling Federation title. Stone Cold Steve Austin against The Rock. These men would wrestle at 15, 17, 19. And I think the match at 17 is still always going to be their best. I go 17, 19, 15. This was a good match and the best match of the night, but it was the weakest of the trilogy, if that makes sense. You know, Austin got the win. Of course, McMahon was going to be referee, but Shawn Michaels came out and told him, 
No, I'm the commissioner, so I tell you, no. You will not be the special guest referee. Hey, and he ended up not being the guest referee. Uh, so, yeah, he ended up not being the, the special guest referee uh, there. And it ended up being um, Earl Hebner. And something else that was interesting to me is Michael Cole was on commentary this whole night. But then the main event comes and good old JR, Jim Ross, is there to call the action. He's there... She's, he's there to call the action. Uh, I mean, hey, it is what it is. My final grade for WrestleMania 15 will be a D plus. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10, and I'm going to call it mediocre because it did great for business at the time. It did great for, for the WWF, and it did what it needed to do. And it, um, it just, I don't know. It, it's one of those ones where you got to look at the time period. But even then, still, this show was not all that good. I mean, a 5 out of 10 is not a good score at all in, in any form of the imagination. Um, and, I, and I would rank this in the bottom 10 as far as WrestleMania is. It's one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. Like I said, uh, well, I need to hurry up and get out of here before I, uh, I go any more sane uh, or insane. But it ain't going to get any better with WrestleMania 2000, folks. Let's say that. It ain't going to get better until 17. So hope you guys enjoyed the review. As always, your boy Killer Cam. Peace. I am out.